Defending 250 champion Doug Henry comes back for a full season of motocross after trying the snowcross circuits earlier in the year. Supercross champion Jeremy McGrath appears at his only national outdoor, breaking new ground with a Supercross only contract. And Frenchman Sebastian Tortelli lends an international feel, beginning his first full season in America. Stay tuned. Round one of AMA National Motocross is next. Hello everyone from Glen Helen Raceway in San Bernardino, California. We're all set to open the AMA National Motocross season. Jeff Emig, he's won this 250 title twice before, trying to rebound from a tough Supercross season. This is the only motocross for this young man, Jeremy McGrath. And welcome back home to Ryan Hughes, taking a break from the GP action. Let's go to Davey. Down here on the starting line, guys, getting ready for the beginning of the first moto, the 250 National Championship Series. We have the riders burning out their tires, getting ready. I want to tell you about this rider right here, number 44, Sebastian Tortelli. He is the guy that Honda's pinned a lot of hopes on to win the Outdoor National Series and get them back to where they were at the top of the motocross heap. Tortelli's got two world championship titles, but coming into Glen Helen today, he's the great unknown. A lot of people say he's the fastest motocross rider in the world. I guess we're about to find out. I'm just glad. It's, I kind of got confused seeing him ride around with the number one plate. I thought McGrath would be holding that, but McGrath's number 15 today. That's right. He hasn't had 15 since 1993, his rookie year in the 250 ranks. We're off and running. The opening moto of 250 action for 1999. Number 14, Kevin Windham, the whole shot. And a lot of Yamahas right behind him. Whoa, look out. A pile up in that turn. Ezra Lusk is involved. Jimmy Button. A great start for Kevin Windham right now. It reminds me a little bit of Casey Johnson in the 125 and that he wasn't able to finish a Supercross season because of an injury. But Kevin's coming in here with not that much riding under his belt. This is going to make it a lot easier on him. Good, strong start on the season for Emmy. There's Tortelli just going by, so he rebounded from that first turn incident pretty well. Here's Emmy getting by Dowd very quickly. So it's Jeff Emmy moving into third place. Ryan Hughes, number 18, right there. Hughes getting by Dowd. He's got something to prove today as well. I talked to him about his bike. He said the bike here is quite a bit faster than the one he's been riding in Europe. It's mainly the gasoline, too. It just jets a little bit better. But it is so encouraging to Jeff Emig fans to see him in the top three. He is doing his best to keep Pichon off of him. Pichon going all the way to the inside. Oh, oh Emig goes down. Looks like he caught that front wheel, maybe on the hay bale. Well, he locked it up, it looked like. Including Hughes and Pichon. There's Jeremy McGrath going through the picture. He's in second place. You see Tortelli's all the way up to sixth place now. He's passed something like nine riders in the last three laps. There's number 44. He's just going faster on every inch of the racetrack, Art. I've never seen anything like the, the charge that he's putting on and where he's able to pass people is just amazing to me. He goes anywhere he wants and makes up time. You see him get around Raynard like it was nothing? No, he oh. oh, and Rhino goes down. Ryan Hughes, welcome home. We got around Hughes, but that was something. I don't think he meant to do that. Their lines just came together. And so Tortelli now is giving the challenge to Mikel Pichon. Team Honda teammates going at it. Wow. I mean, it's just a, a straightaway where no one's been passing, and he makes a pass through there even on his teammate. Same motorcycle. It's not a question of having more horsepower. It's he's getting the power to the ground a little bit better. Shane, while a lot of people have been watching the battle up front between Wyndham and McGrath, I've noticed that Tortelli's come from about 25th to 3rd in the first four laps. you got to be impressed by this kid. Yeah, the kid's hauling butt. I got him about halfway around the first lap in 10th. Um, a few guys have fallen, but he's been making up some time. I think he can win it. Well, that's confidence in the pits, isn't it? Well, it's, what he can see is what we're seeing now is the fact that while these guys are battling, Tortelli's just closing so fast. I think Jeremy recognizes that because he has now supplied more pressure to Kevin. I think if he can get away, 
Maybe Tortelli had to deal with Kevin a little while before he gets to Jan. Oh, great racing. They get at the top of St. Helens. Open up that throttle a bit coming down the hill. Well, that is not an easy place to make a pass, but you can take advantage of somebody being a little bit cautious coming down the hill. That's what Jeremy did to the inside. You gotta have a lot of confidence in your riding ability to make oh. that stick. Jeremy McGrath now pulling a pretty sizable lead on Kevin Windham. But all the stopwatches are on number 44, Tortelli. Look at that. He's already there. The last lap, he wasn't even in the picture. And now he's already making the pass. Clean pass from teammates. And Tortelli quickly moves into second place. I don't think Wyndham could do much about that. Tortelli is just on a mission. Kevin Wyndham, the winner in the 125 ranks here back in 1996. Tortelli makes the move on McGrath. Back and forth we go. The crowd is going crazy. Jeremy McGrath regaining the lead. You see Jeremy now protecting that inside line. He hasn't been using that. He's not riding his own race right now. He's got to be defensive. Oh, you can hear the fans. Here's Tortelli to the inside. Tortelli and Jeremy almost off the track. Tortelli regains the lead. Well, this is an aggressive battle between two very confident riders. But Tortelli's just on a roll right now, Art. When you come through the pack the way he has, and nothing can stop you, not even Jeremy McGrath. Jeremy's fighting. Almost like a service break in tennis. You like to come right back and break the other guy's serve. Watch this. So Tortelli, or Jeremy rather, is going to go wide. Tortelli just cuts off the line. We saw Carmichael do that in the 125 class the same way. Makes that pass move. They rub elbows down the straightaway out. And Jeremy doesn't have second sense right now with Mikel Pichon on his tail. Now he's still got to stay honest right there. No mistakes. Look at Tortelli. He's already disappeared. Uh-oh. Kevin Windham has crashed. He's up on the top now of Mount St. Helens. Jeff Stanton coming to his aid. Number 44 on the final lap, on the verge of winning his very first national moto in his first attempt. That's the amazing thing. It's only been done once before. The checkers for Sebastian Tortelli. And Jeremy McGrath now approaching the finish line jump. He just goes over in second. Holding off Mikel Pichon, who takes a third. Photo number two is now underway. Tortelli, not with a very good start. If anything happens to the first turn, look out. Jimmy Button on the Yamaha four-stroke gets the whole shot. McGrath is in great position now for overall. There you see him, second, third place. Huffman, number 31. Number 14, once again, a good start for Kevin Windham. Dowd, there's Henry in the play. Oh, going down is our team. And look at Tortelli got caught behind him. Damon Huffman's got to be pleased with his start here in the second moto after difficult times and having to battle up into the top 10 in the first moto. See McGrath cross over the line of Huffman because in that sand there's a lot of rock. It's like gravel. You get hit with one of those, it hurts. This trio right here, LaRocco, Pashona, and Ryan, these guys are on the move. Once again, we find three Hondas. They're all getting around. Uh, something seems to be wrong with Henry right now. He just all of a sudden dropped way off the pace. Here's the battle for first now as Jeremy McGrath has picked up on Jimmy Button, looking for the opportunity, having to pick it up, probably knowing that Tortelli's on the move. Jeremy McGrath taking the lead, cuts in front of Button. This is just blowing my mind. He went around Ryan Hughes, Pichon, Lust. I mean, like, they're just parked. It's ridiculous. The guy can go anywhere on the racetrack, make a pass anywhere, and he's still gaining time on McGrath out front in traffic. Staying away from being right behind LaRocco, except taking that groove. Now, it might be, take a little longer to get around Mike. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Good call, Dave. <laughs> I'm telling you, this guy's... As of David Bailey, watch this. This guy's blowing my mind. <laughs> Just incredible. Mount Tortelli has about 12 seconds to pick up in order to catch our leader. Wow, look at Huffman. Huffman just searching for a way and finds it. It's to the inside. Damon Huffman now moving into second place. He wanted that bad. <laughs> That's the farthest I've seen anybody jump into that corner all day. And look at 44. 
Tortelli, he's come from another world. He's already on these guys. I mean, he had, what, about four seconds to make up on them in this last lap, and there he's already on. Look how fast, I mean, he's just wide open. And the thing about him is, it's unlike watching Boland in the 125, where he looks like he's a little bit on the edge, Tortelli looks under control. A 250 is not faster than a 400. I'm pretty sure, but he just he gets that power to the ground. Look at Button. Button kind of squeezes him into the corner. The photographer having to get out of the way. The longer he does that, the more he's going to irritate Tortelli. He'll only put up with it once or twice. Look at the power, though, of that two-stroke oh. Team Honda number 44, Sebastian Tortelli, on the upside of Mount St. Helens. That was just anger right there. He got a drive. He was going to pass Button. He put him into the grass on purpose. They're not even really worried about whether Tortelli can get around Huffman. Oh, so all he needed was a little bobble. I think he was going to get around him anyway, but now they're looking at the gap to McGrath, and that is close. Look at that. Tortelli. It's like he's on another track. You know what, though? That It appears as though Jeremy's riding a little differently. Like, maybe Jeremy has a problem. That's why he's able to catch him so quick. And another thing I like about Tortelli, he's a very charming character who likes the United States. Plans yeah. on vacationing and traveling throughout the United States while he's here. The checkers for Sebastian Tortelli. It's becoming a habit already here with the first round. From Sacramento, California, a record crowd on hand for round two of AMA Motocross. Sebastian Tortelli, will he dominate here in round number two like he did in round number one? <laughs> a very interesting season. 32nd for it sideways. Moto number one is about set to get underway. Number 44, Tortelli. 14 is Wyndham. You have Luska Larocco right in your picture along with Damon Huffman. And it's Wyndham doing a little wheelie. He gets the whole shot. Henry, Emig, Ward, Lusk, Michonne, they're all right there. Whoa, there goes Tortelli in the middle of the pack. He's down. He had to wait to get back to his bike. Sebastian Tortelli will now start from 40th position. But our leader right now is Wyndham with Doug Henry, number one, the defending champion behind him on the fourth stroke. The guy that's got the big advantage who really suffered problems in the opening laps and Glenn Helen is Doug Henry now. Good shot at the lead. Emig number 11, Team Kawasaki, crashed out of uh, third in the first photo last week. And look here, Mikel Pichon has crashed in the first photo here today. Ezra's been a good conditioner his entire career. It was injuries that stepped into the way of being really competitive. And there's Mike LaRocco going down. Going wide the first time. Cutting to the inside now. Here comes Lusk with the challenge. Lusk making the pass. They gain on you that fast. You're thinking, geez, what, what else can I do? <laughs> Kevin Windham, after a 38th and a 14th in the first round, is looking to pick up things. And look at the easy inside pass, Ezra Lusk. Almost like Windham said, here, take it. To the inside, Greg Albertine makes the move. Alby with a 1-2 here last year, took second place behind Jeremy McGrath. McGrath had a 2-1 to take the overall title. Tortelli has made a lot of progress since we last talked about him here. He's battling for eighth against Jimmy Button on another Yamaha four-stroke. But Tortelli showing us the great maneuverability and speed that he has in the outdoors. He makes that look easy. He just doubled up that hill and got around him. And the thing that Tortelli must just hate about Button right now is Seems as though every time he gets around Button, he's looking around for him and trying to cut off his line and ride not his own race. And Wyndham and Albertine. Albertine making the move on Kevin Wyndham for second place. Here is our leader, Ezra Lusk. What a great job he's done out in front. Well, he finally slows down. He <laughs> looks back. Checking out his vapor trail. Ezra Lusk, the checkered flag. 32nd board is up, and when that goes sideways, the gate will drop from five to 10 seconds. 
And we will have our second moto underway here at the Hangtown Classic. Okay, they'll be revving up now. Let's see who gets the whole shot. Who will get the break? Where's Tortelli? Tortelli, not a very good start. That's Doug Henry on the four stroke getting the whole shot. That's Jeff Emig in second place. He took the inside line. Almost looked like he had the whole shot. Whoa, look out! Ezra Lusk goes down. Tortelli's mixed up in it. That slows him down. Well, he's in double digits in his start right now. Disaster for Lusk. He won the first moto. He's going to have to come from last night. And Albertine, Pichon also mixed up and held up in that crash. What a bummer for Lusk. First moto winner. The pack is already gone. There's Alby. He's still yet to get going. These guys are 1-2 in the first moto. We're going to get guys winning motos and getting in the first turn crash. Or even at times, you can see a Japanese rider still down. That's what the flags are for. Look at that. We've got a pack of four up near the front. Wyndham puts the wheel out, but Henry comes back on that four stroke. Doug Henry able to hook up after the corner. But right now, Wyndham gets the corner speed, and there comes Henry back again. Oh, what a battle for the lead. You really got to be aggressive and creative to get around a bike that's a little bit more powerful. And you can hear that four stroke burping its way back into the lead. Uh, it looks like Wyndham is a little bit quicker. This is what happened earlier to Damon Huffman. He gets on the gas, gets sideways. Watch it pitch him high side. No, he didn't expect that. David, it's interesting to see the riders that are stepping up to the plate right now, even though Tortelli dominated so much in that opening round. Who will come out of this bar to bar situation? Kevin Windham, number 14. Already with a two second lead, Kevin Windham now on Doug Henry. Emig to the inside on Henry. Oh, they almost touched tires. Emig taking over second place. And Morocco making the move now on Jimmy Button. Takes over fifth spot. But still between Larocco and Tortelli. Like I said in the first moto, seems like every time Button and Tortelli get together, there's a little bit of a some blocking going on. Guys looking around at each other. Let's see what happens this time. Tortelli to the outside. Whoa, little fish tail, but he holds on to the control. What finesse through those corners. Raynard in position now to look for opportunity against Sebastian Tortelli. Wouldn't that be a story? Tortelli looks back. Raynard to the inside. Raynard in sixth spot right now. Boy, what an unusual sight early in the season this is. Can Tortelli come back now? You see people pass Tortelli there. Wow, look at Tortelli right in that corner. Oh, a flying W by Raynard. Feet off the peg. Somehow he regained control of that Team Suzuki bike. Oh, and look at that. Tortelli does a little spinning of his own. These guys are riding at 100% right now, pushing each other. Watch what happens to Rayner. You see right there, that's what makes it tough, because Doug's lines cross over here and there, and you can't really get a run at him. Morocco right. slingshots right by him. Here comes Tortelli. Oh, Tortelli, a gutsy move. Look out. Here comes Emmy. Wyndham sliding a little bit there. Here to the inside, Emmy, and we've got a new leader. One of those riders you love to watch ride when he's riding well. He just does everything right. Uh oh, oh Tortelli slipped out. He fell on his left side, too. He's got that hand probably pretty much healed right now, but it's making me nervous to see him fall on that side. Jeff seems to be affected a lot more than most by confidence or lack of, and right now he's starting to build some. Could be dangerous. It could make things very interesting for our outdoor national season. Jeff Emmy sees the checkers, celebrates with both hands. Whoa, Team Yamaha's Jimmy Button went down. On the final lap, Button trying to get that four stroke back up and then has to restart it. Hello everyone, Art Ekman, David Bailey, and Davey Coombs from High Point Raceway in Mount Morris, Pennsylvania for round number three of AMA Motocross action. This is one of my favorite starting areas because there's lots of room to maneuver. We're set to go, the gate drops. And it gets closed off. And you can hear the four stroke going by. <laughs> Sound so much different. These guys. Seeing this racetrack again, 
since practice has changed quite a bit, dried out considerably since the 125. Be a little bit slicker. Albertine starting to challenge Dowd now. Whoa, Dowd gets a little kick in the rear end. Look at Albertine, just holds that off. He didn't even go all the way to the flat. He just turned on the off camera and made that pass. Art, that was amazing. Albertine into second place now. Larocco starting to put the pressure on John Dowd. What a move by Greg Albertine. He's looking smooth. Henry, number one, the defending champion on the four stroke. You see there he's in sixth behind John Dowd as Larocco made short work of John Dowd. Whoa, Lusk tries for the inside. Oh, we've got a great challenge for the lead right now. Albertine to the outside. Can't quite get it. Rubs a little rubber on the backside of Wyndham. Looks like Albie's looking for a place now to take over. Once again, holds that inside line with power. It's like he's got a berm that nobody else had. I, I can't believe how well he's sticking to that inside. Here's Lust now putting the challenge to Doug Henry. There's Pichon number five. Lust just getting the best drive out of that corner up the hill he could get. Still couldn't gain any. Oh, couldn't gain time on Doug Henry. What a save. LaRocco went cartwheeling, and now he's back on his bike. Trying to straighten things out, David. Now it's pretty bent. If, even if he's OK, he's going to have a tough time riding aggressive with that handlebars and levers bent the way they are. Yeah, look at LaRocco. He's still trying to get things adjusted. Henry and Lusk to the inside. Real careful not to rub plastic, but LaRocco still holds on. That was the advantage Lusk needed. He got the two for one right there. He's still trying to get that bike straightened out, and Lusk took advantage, made a pass on both of them. Lusk and Henry. And here comes Tortelli, number 44, and Tim Ferry, number 20. Tortelli! Whoa. They almost got their lines crossed. On the 250 first moto, the battle for fourth is on. There's Doug Henry, number one. Number 44, Sebastian Tortelli, our points leader. He's trying to catch up with Ezra Lusk, number four, who is second in points. Ezra's mission is to hold Tortelli behind him. Well, Doug Henry just got smoked across that off camera by Tortelli. Whoa, Tortelli now is starting to take advantage of Ezra Lusk. He's made the pass. Tortelli, number 44, finally passing Ezra Lusk. That shot at the Chaparral Yamaha team. Absolutely, and he's proving it right now. Oh! Lust coming down that hill as fast as he could go to try to hold off Henry. I don't think he's going to be able to. Henry to the inside. Doug Henry and Lust going at it. What did you think when Greg Albertine first came out and said, hey, I can win it this year. I will win it, in fact, he said. Well, it's a possibility. I think there's a lot of people thinking Tortelli or possibly Emmett could find his rhythm, Lust. Uh, maybe there's a little bit more focus on those guys. People seem to have forgotten about Greg simply because the Supercross season didn't go all that well for him, but he's more of an outdoor rider. Coming down the home stretch, Greg Albertine saluting the fans and the checkers for Albertine, his first moto win since May 17th of last year at Hangtown. Things happen so fast in National Motocross action. There you see Tortelli right next to Wyndham, number 14. Wyndham getting the whole shot in the first photo. We're off now and running. Let's see who gets the whole shot here in the second photo. It's Jimmy Button on a four stroke, number 10. And right there with another four stroke is Doug Henry in third with John Dowd in between the two. Doug Henry now starting to pull away from Jimmy Button. Henry, Button, Albertine now in third, Dowd fourth, and Luskin fifth. Tough the first lap, there's so much traffic. Knowing who's gonna go where, you gotta really know your competitors, and I don't think Sebastian does. Look at Albertine again. This is where the track is the roughest, the slickest. Look at Dowd, right back around the outside. That's where you gotta find that nice loam, Dowd did it. While Wyndham was trying to get the finesse, 
feather that throttle, a hook up on the hard pack. Dowd found that low and rode right around him. This track really forces you to think. Watch Lusk, gonna use that berm, the slingshot up the hill, try to get a run at Button. And it's Ezra Lusk, edging in front of Button. As Davey pointed out, here's one of Albertine's favorite corners. He was forced to the outside this time, but good acceleration by Albertine. Albertine has the inside angle and takes the lead. You just cannot beat Craig Albertine through that corner today. I don't care who you are. Here at High Point Raceway, we got a battle going on. Tortelli taking on John Dowd. Well, it wasn't a battle for long. Listen to how much Tortelli revs that bike. Tortelli is able to go fast everywhere on the racetrack. That's why he can come through the pack so well. Raynard is Robbie Raynard, number 17, Team Suzuki. Now as uh, Tortelli scratching some plastic real close. Bar to bar for a moment, and now Tortelli. He's right around the outside of Wyndham, makes it look easy, goes for the triple. Looks like these guys are in his way. This is starting to look like Glenn Helen all over again. He's leading the points. I mean, who is this guy? He's doing everything right. <laughs> There's Ezra Lusk, and that's uh, really where he's got his uh, sights on right now. Whoa, Getting finally. in front of uh, Button. He makes the pass. It's the first mistake I've really seen Tortelli make. And he goes, well, I think I'll just take the inside this time. And he still makes it work. Rainer's another one of those guys like Tortelli that can find fast lines everywhere, work his way through the pack. Look at him go to work on button, inside, outside, always trying to get aggressive. Look at that. He makes it work across the inside. As for Luskin third, Tortelli. In fourth, trying to pick up some more points on the second place rider, Ezra Lusk. That's great that these guys are pushing each other and the rest of the field is going to have to rise up. Greg Albertine making his move across the finish line, jump, gets the checkered flag. He's got the 1-1 one -one sweep. What an afternoon for Team Suzuki. So Albertine puts the camper on a great afternoon. Tortelli in second. Lusk in third in our second moto. Robbie Raynard holding on to fourth. Kevin Windham rounding out the top five. And look at that. Another fine performance for Chaparral's Tim Ferry. Hello, everybody. Art Eckman, David Bailey, and Dave Burns in the northeast section of the country now with round number four of AMA Motocross in Southwick, Massachusetts. Henry won last year. Dowd won in 97. Emig won the main event here in 95. And LaRocco won in 94. Who will it be now in 1999 as we get set for our opening moto for the 250s? They are underway. John Dowd with a great start. Ezra Lusk is right there. Doug Henry as well. LaRocco a good start. Number four, Lusk with the pressure on. There's Henry number one. But our leader... A very popular guy right here in the Northeast is John Down. Oh, Henry goes down in a dangerous spot. So John Dowd now carrying the team Yamaha colors out in front all alone as Ezra Lusk is in pursuit. There's with him number 14 going through the picture. 20 is Ferry, 10, Jimmy Button. There goes Tortelli and Larry Ward just going through the corner. I think on a track like this, maybe not in the first couple of laps, but as this race starts to settle down a little bit, this is the kind of place where you can make a lot of passes. So Tortelli has proven that he can do that. It'll be tough to catch his leaders, but he can still get up in the top three. Several of these riders, including Tortelli, raced at a local race here last week, and now Tortelli is down. He tangled with Jimmy Button. So this is a great break for Ezra Lusk points-wise. Haven't I said that he and Button get together all too often? <laughs> Lampson on the Chaparral Yamaha. Greg Albertine of Team Suzuki. Number 24, Lampson. Albertine really gunning it down. Maybe the battle for fifth, but they're not that. Oh, oh. Albertine, and he flops over, losing one, two, maybe three positions. Takes the heat off a little bit of uh, for Steve Lampson, though, but looking right behind him now is Kevin Windham putting the press, and Lampson goes down. Oh, my goodness, the battles are being decided by crashes right now. He's stuck, too. I don't Look think he's going to get loose. Albertine, Ward, got his leg caught underneath there. 
LaRocco chasing Damon Huffman, gets a good launch off that top. Had a good drive up the hill, jumped the whole bump. Everyone else been hidden, but look at LaRocco, just muscle his way to the inside. John Dowd, Ezra Lusk, it's been bang, bang all the way. Ezra really hasn't taken the opportunity, though, to make a move. It looks to me like he's just been staying close and studying. The longer he stays Whoa. close. John Dowd fishtailing, and that gave the break to Ezra Lusk. He just took it. It was well, given to him. I was about to say, the longer you stay close like that, the more pressure you put on the guy. And as he gets down to the end, you can look for a mistake. Portelli. He's not even in the top 10. That'll help him points-wise. Here's a big battle going on. Albertine and Kevin Windham. Albertine to the inside. Albertine, after crashing, or at least going down, has got back up and moved into fifth place. Morocco with his sights on John Dowd. Let's see what happens. They've got a rider in, in between, and Mike Morocco to the inside. He took the right line. Well, now is when the bikes can suffer problems. I don't think they're going to have any standing water on the track. That's that's where they run into more problems, sucking water and ruining the motor. Look at Albertine, just Albertine. charging. Goes after Damon Huffman and succeeds. Huffman tries that inside turn, but Albie pours it on to the outside. You know, we're able to see fine, but these guys soaking up all that roost. That's not going to be a problem now. Just pass the guy. Weeding through the lappers right now and trying to get by Damon Huffman as number 44, Sebastian Tortelli. Boy, did he start the season with a dominating performance. The sweeping motos at Glen Helen. Tortelli to the inside on Huffman, and he's got uh, Wyndham right in front of him. I think one of Sebastian's most powerful tools is that he can go pretty much anywhere he wants to go on the racetrack at any time. So his ability to pass is probably better than anyone on the racetrack just simply because he just picks his spot and goes for the move. Tortelli coming into this race with an 11-point lead on Ezra Lusk. And Tortelli to the inside makes the move on Kevin Windham. Ezra Lusk heads toward the checkered flag at Southwick, Massachusetts. He will pick up some valuable points on Sebastian Tortelli as he takes the checkered flag. A tremendous ride for Ezra Lusk. There you see Mike LaRocco just coming across the finish line in second place. A drenched Jeff Stanton goes over to congratulate Ezra Lusk. So it'll be Lusk, LaRocco, and Dowd out of this first moto with Greg Albertine and Kevin Windham rounding out the top five. And Tortelli, our points leader, all the way back in sixth position. They're starting to rev up. The gate will drop any second now. The fans going crazy in the background, and they're off. And look at that John Dowd. He gets another great start. Team Yamaha's John Dowd is out in front. Ezra Lusk once again as they get tied up in that first turn. Tortelli gets a terrible start going around the outside. He avoided those riders going down, but still was at the back of the pack. I really believe that if Emig was getting the hole shots he got last year, he'd be up in there figuring out the pace but when you come in from a moto and you're going who won you know how are you going to figure out what everyone's doing out there that the pace the lines completely out of touch we talk a lot about Dowd and Henry very familiar with this part of the country whoa Albertine is involved in a crash that was Austin Squires number 120 just getting up first but what a traffic jam causing a detour right here number 28 Heath Voss He's the privateer on a Honda, but Albertine losing some valuable time. Look at the drive Lusk has. Whoa. Lusk with a late breaking move, and the jump gets by John Dowd. That was just all out speed, full commitment. You get a little squirrely at that speed, you're going to go down hard. Steve Lapson, number 24, Doug Henry. And Henry makes the pass on Lammy. We mentioned Carmichael winning his fourth consecutive national. He won six in a row last year. The record holder is Steve Lampson. He's probably running about the same pace as Lust, but if you don't start with him, it doesn't do you much good. Portelli looking to make a move right now. He's uh, on the inside of that berm. Wyndham real close to the mechanics area. And Tortelli makes the pass. It's Ezra Lusk in first place. John Dowd in second. This is the battle for third. LaRocco putting the pressure on Doug Henry. 
And then it's Lampson and Tortelli behind him. Tortelli really putting the pressure on Lampson now, too. We got close Tortelli falls. I mean, if anything goes wrong with Lampson, he's bought. He doesn't have to take advantage. It's, it's already done. That's the advantage of following somebody that close. That's what Johnson used to do to me. That's what Hannah always did to people. And to the inside, Tortelli takes him. And here's a good shot of Ezra from Bainbridge, Georgia. So the contrast of, of styles and personalities at Honda are complementing each other well now. Interesting situation for the team manager, Cliff White, to handle. Tortelli going back and forth now with Doug Henry. And Tortelli moves up another notch. I don't think he's going to leave the door open anywhere. Whoa, Tortelli's trying everything he knows how. Paul DeLaurier, LaRocco's mechanic, jumping up and down, waving him on. This is the battle for third. This would be his very first 1-1 sweep in national action. He takes the checkers. A little extracurricular move there as he came across the jump. <laughs> I didn't think he had enough air time for that, but he still did it in. Ezra Laska, great day for him. He takes over the points lead. Sebastian Tortelli losing some more points. Tortelli is down. He still has a chance for fourth place if he can get that bike started. He's underway. Looks like he will secure fourth. Everybody, Art Eckman along with David Bailey and Davey Coombs bringing you the action from Bud's Creek, Maryland. Our fifth round of AMA Motocross on the season. Interesting strategy with Wyndham way on the outside. Yeah, I think what he may have done was found out that over in front of the starting gate, it was a much better patch of dirt. Get better traction. They're off and running. The first motor of the 250 is underway. Kevin Wyndham cuts out in front. His strategy worked. Sebastian Tortelli is in second place. Had a lock jam right there. Number 17, Robbie Raynard plopping down. There's number eight, Greg Albertine, just getting out of the pack. Kevin Wyndham after his fourth hole shot of the season. It'll be interesting to see how Tortelli reacts to this surface. Well, I know he's a great mud rider, but so is Kevin Wyndham. So I look for these guys to just pull away from the pack. Kevin, growing up in Louisiana, used to like to practice in the rain even. Watch that bike. David, look at that rear wheel. Well, if you skid the rear wheel down into a corner, downhill like that, you actually pick up speed. You want to get on the brake just enough so it doesn't skid. When you get into a tight, sharp corner, sometimes they pull in the clutch all the way not to stall the motor and purposely skid the back tire. Pitch it all the way around, get that corner made before they even get there. These are the conditions that just play into the favor of Kevin Windham's smooth style, his great balance and throttle control. That's how you ride in these conditions. Dowdy winning his first race, uh, first national at Hangtown. As well as comes in for some goggles. Well, that's a tough one. Coming in to get goggles, you've got to try to keep the bike running. Look at LaRocco. I think that's LaRocco anyway, just flying through there making a pass. LaRocco looked like he was passing uh, Sebastian Waugh, Jean Sebastian Waugh. Yes, it is. But look at this. He's starting to put the pressure on. Kevin Wyndham, number 44, has pulled up very, very close to Wyndham. And Wyndham is about ready to lap Ezra Lusk. Lusk winning this race back in 1997. He's looking back at his teammates as they pass him. Probably like to be in that battle for real instead of being a lap down. How frustrating to be the points leader and be getting lapped. Whoa! Tortelli to the inside! Sebastian Tortelli has taken the lead from Kevin Windham. Look out, it sounded like he had a four-stroke in front of him there. He's got about three riders in front of him. I wish I could tell you who went down, but because of the mud, I don't know. And here comes Kevin Windham right back again. Kevin. That took his time, got back into the main groove, and hooked up much better up that hill. And Tortelli's down now. Sebastian Tortelli adds more bad luck to the situation. Can he hold on to second place? The engine's still running. Uh, that explains the look on Shane Drew's face. The checkers for Kevin Windham, his first moto win of 1999. Despite the fact that he has an overall victory already, this is his first moto win. It's been incredible in three of the 
four events this year, the rider who won the first moto swept the entire event. Can Kevin Windham, number 14, do it again? He got the whole shot in the first moto, and look at that, an incredible whole shot for Kevin Windham, his fifth of the year, his fifth in 10 motos. Team Suzuki, number seven, is right up there banging bars. Looks like he was uh, locking horns there with uh, Doug Henry, number one, the defending champion of this event last year. Looked like he was going down, and there's Ezra Lusk going down. Ian Albertine getting collected. Running into John Dow, trying to get around. Look at him just paddling through there. And Emig is averaging eighth place finishes over those same motos. Yeah, that's just not going to get it done. He's fifth in the points. Uh, that's what he's right now. And shoot, that's not bad considering the starts he's had. Ward hoping to turn it around here. Uh-oh, Henry down for the second time. Doug Henry tried. He's going to have to restart that four-stroke. Look at these guys going by, roosting them. They're, they're going by in third gear, missing his handlebar by a few inches. Jimmy Button looking down at the bike. The bike is stalled. Albertine sails by into third. Raynard working his way up. Covered with mud, he can barely identify, can't identify any. Oh, that's uh, Tortelli going down. Tortelli, who was not in a good position to begin with. He's stuck, can't even budge. Look at that, now he's got to get the strength, put his legs behind it, and try to get the bike out of the mud. And how's that throttle gonna be? The throttle, the front, all that's just covered with mud now. Look at the front wheel, it's not even gonna, it's just frustrating situation. I've been there, and then you can't even get going. He's just packed in. And if the rider's cut to the inside, he's going to get a mouthful. Another rider, Steve Lampson, was down at the bottom of the hill. He got a little bit of uh, mud puddle action there. This is going to be one of those days where he's going to come in and go, oh, man, where was everybody? Is that everything he's doing right there just hops over that plateau, jumps that one hand and waving at the fans. His slow lap here and his Probably as good as about 80% of the riders out there trying their hardest. That's the kind of day he's had. With this kind of riding, David Bailey, it's going to get him right back into the points race. The checkers for Kevin Windham. And it'll be a happy ride home. Hello, everybody. Art Ekman along with David Bailey and Davey Coombs. It is hot and a humid day at the Red Bud Track and Trail of Buchanan, Michigan for our sixth round of AMA Motocross. 30-second board is up. Oh, what a long gate it looks like right there with all 40 riders ready to go. Now the board is down and we're revving up, getting set for our first 250 moto of the afternoon from Red Bud. They're underway and the red bikes are out in front. Whoa! Austin Squires from Middletown, Rhode Island hit the deck like a load full of rocks. And out in front, it's Kevin Windham and Ezra Lusk. A huge crowd, comfortable with the racetrack. He's been just on fire lately, coming off a win. He's got his teammate behind him who he's comfortable with. Couldn't ask for anything better right now. Tortelli up there, Emig. These guys both together in the pack, but not the kind of start those guys need to get up there and battle with Kevin and Lust. Doug Henry on the four stroke. Doug was the first two time winner in last year's series. Emig was the first three time winner. LaRocco now starting to make the move, goes to the inside. It's Mike LaRocco trying to get in front of Doug Henry. Good example right here as Tortelli tries to get a wheel to the inside on Henry, but just can't do it. And Henry gets that acceleration out of the corner. Meanwhile, in the lap time here, Tortelli is going to lose probably three seconds. Oh, Henry spun the back wheel, and Tortelli, he got lucky. That's what happens when you don't follow. Yeah, he's doing pretty good. He got by Henry early in this race, so we're going to go somewhere today. Usually he gets stuck behind Henry for like half the race and wears himself out, but he got him early, so we're going. We'll soon find out John Dowd will be their victim if they do. LaRocco to the inside, Tortelli to the outside. Watch him just cut in behind LaRocco. Tortelli. Picks up another spot, and that was just a little mistake by LaRocco. Well, Greg Albertine has just made the pass on Ezra Lusk for second place. 
appears to be the fastest guy on the racetrack. Possibly he and Albert uh, Tortelli right here is just working, trying to find some part of the racetrack to make a pass on Dowd. Maybe he's found one as they're going all out down that hill. Tortelli makes the move finally and gets into fifth place. He just floated into that berm. His line from the outside came in there perfect. And LaRocco's trying to take advantage of it as quick as he can as well. Boy, the roost on this track has got to be interesting. First of all, you get a lot of loose dirt and some pebbles. But that sand, well, you can really get a sand blast getting behind these guys. It's a pretty coarse sand, for one thing, so you're right. And it's staying nice. Great Beautiful. move. Wyndham, Albertine, Lusk, all ahead of Tortelli. Now Lusk is really tight in the screws, as he always does at the end of a race. But the pressure on Albertine can take advantage. Look at all these lap riders. Amazing, weeding right through the lappers. And bar to bar, Lusk and Albertine. This is a big move, points-wise. Ezra Lusk gets back into second place. Lusk is right there keeping him honest, but I just don't know if there's an opportunity from here to the finish line for Ezra. Wyndham just bound and determined to get back into the points race and in contention for the championship. That's how you do it, keep winning motos. Looks back to see where Lusk is. The crowd waving him on as the checkers now are out for Kevin Windham. Ezra Lusk just right behind him. Revving up, ready to go. Second moto underway from Red Bud, Buchanan, Michigan. And do you believe it? Kevin Windham gets another hole shot. Number 14. That is seven hole shots in only 12 motos. Yeah, it looks like Team Yamaha second through fourth. What an opportunity, though, for Greg Albertine and Kevin Windham. You see Albertine moving into second place right now in front of John Dowd to pick up points on the leader. That oh, up. Ezra Lusk has gone down. Tortelli got delayed a little bit as well. But Ezra Lusk now is way back. He's out of the points. Here goes Albertine. Oh my goodness, what a battle for first place. Who's going to break the latest? <laughs> oh! What a squeeze play by Albertine, cutting to the inside. There was no room for that. Hey, Kevin's got to be going, what? <laughs> Show me that again. I, I don't understand how he fit through there. Tortelli gets to the inside of Buck. That would be interesting, Art. And you know, besides the excitement, uh oh, Rainer's out. Looks putting like in a good ride. Him, yeah. That's too bad. It's the best year I've ever seen as far as the amount of guys that have a shot at the title at this point in the series. Beautiful line there by Lusk. Jumped about four breaking bumps right there. Ezra Lusk has done an amazing job after getting up off the dirt in 28th place. Here is Greg Albertine. He is our leader. He looks like he's in a hurry, too. Pretty aggressive, and charging into the corners. Jeff Emig in fourth, doing well here after a difficult season really doesn't surprise me. Whether times were glorious or hideous, Jeff could always count on Red Bud to be just the right tonic. He probably wants to win really bad, like maybe Wednesday and Thursday, but you got to want to win all week. As soon as he gets that desire strong all week, he'll be able to do it. Jeff Hemming takes the inside line, and he gets into third place. Sebastian Tortelli just trying to pick up more points. Oh, my goodness! How did he How did he ever stay on that bike? That was just luck. He's probably not believing that himself. Good ride. He had. It looked like he was going to win the first moto, too. He just kind of got caught up in the lappers at the wrong time. Our buddy Jeff Ward had the same problem in Indianapolis this year. The checkers for Albertine. And behind him, Kevin Windham, holding on to second place, will win the overall. It's Albertine, Windham, and Emmy. Our top three with Dowd, Tortelli, and fifth. Look at Ezra Lusk. He came all the way back to ninth place from 28.
Hello, everyone. Art Ekman, David Bailey, and Davey Coombs with you from Unadilla Sports Center in New Berlin, New York. Tortelli and Albertine all the way on the inside or to the left of your screen right now. See how that turns out. That should be interesting. That's the first time I've seen contenders in there right next to each other. Who will get the whole shot? David Huffman of the Kawasaki on the outside. Looks like he'll get the whole shot, buddy. But Kevin Windham, number 14, is right behind him. Rainer going down the middle of the pack. That's a real slick area. We've seen a lot of guys almost wash out there, and Robert Rainer was lucky that he wasn't picked off by the riders coming from behind. Wyndham, three wins on the season, the winningest rider so far, but if he hadn't had that uh, Glenn Helen experience where he had a 38th in the first moto for no points and a 14th place in the second, he'd be right up there near the top of the list right now. They started right next to each other, and they're still next to each other out there on the track. Keeping tabs on one another. Lots to learn from each other. They're both probably the most aggressive riders out there on the racetrack. And Albie makes a pass on Huffman, yep. exercising some of that aggressiveness. It's not easy to get to the inside of that corner and make a pass stick. I'm impressed with Waugh here. You know, I was pretty impressed with the way LaRocco had just closed the gap up to, to Wyndham because Wyndham is so fast in the first couple laps of the race, but now Waugh is maybe the faster of the three. The challenge is on. Wyndham, number 14, has got Mike LaRocco. Oh, and Ezra Lusk is down. Ezra Lusk is down. That's on the uphill as they come out of the back. That's just about 10 feet away from the mechanics area coming around the corner just to the left of what we're seeing here. The independent team of Factory Connection Jack in the Box of Mike LaRocco taking on Team Honda's Kevin Windham. morocco has been out breaking him into most of the corners. Still can't find his way around yet. Side by side, Nil. Nice little brush. Good block pass for Mike LaRocco taking over the lead. And insult the injury. Gave him a good roost on the way out of there, too. Oh. Yeah, Sebastian Wall almost going over the bars. Looked like he missed a shift or something, but that gives Tortelli a lot more confidence. Tortelli to the inside. Number 44. He is so fast. He's looking up at Kevin Windham right now. And the battle for second place has gone back and forth. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. The team Honda. Tortelli tries an inside move. Then goes to the outside. Wyndham covers that. Wyndham covered that beautifully. But Tortelli gets the inside move. And with great speed, takes over the position. You can't let up any second now. You take one line to try to get around Morocco, and Tortelli might take advantage of it. Holding these guys off in this moto could do a lot for his confidence and send a message to these other guys. Into the lap traffic, Tortelli now getting ever so close to Mike LaRocco on the final lap. This has been the best moto I've seen all year. Greg Albertine is not that far behind. Should something happen to one of these two riders? LaRocco trying to hold on for his first moto victory of the year. Look how fast Tortelli, he was on the power before LaRocco was. Usually when the rider in front of you comes out of the corner, that gap opens up. It actually closed. We've had so many close altercations in this moto. To the inside, Tortelli. Can LaRocco hold on? LaRocco playing off maybe a lapper there. Mike LaRocco just a few turns away. Well, he is really thinking right now about what is he going to do in this, as soon as they drop down this hill right here, he better do this corner perfect, not leave any room or Tortelli's going to take it. Tortelli to the inside once again, but that becomes the outside as they come up that very steep hill. Morocco playing it perfect. Morocco to the outside, getting as much momentum as possible to come up the hill. Morocco takes the checkered flag. Tortelli, Albertine in that order just that quickly. Oh, what excitement for more than 30 minutes. Morocco, Tortelli, Albertine. Look at that Damon Huffman who got the whole shot is in ninth. Robbie Rayner, who went down to about 35th, is now in 10th. We're sideways, and the gate will drop any second now. Let's check out Wyndham and LaRocco side by side. The charge is on for the corner. Kevin Wyndham gets the whole shot, but Doug Henry is right there to take the lead. 
right behind Henry is Tortelli for a change. Had a great start this time. Morocco moving into fourth. He's looking for that overall. Albertine is back in seventh. He's got some picking up to do. With Tortelli already going to the work down the inside, trying to get around Henry. Washed out a little bit. Ho goes into the grass. Our leader is Kevin Windham, but the battle for second has been torrid between Sebastian Tortelli, who's got a good start, and number one, Doug Henry Tortelli making the move. But look at the acceleration up the hill that Henry gets to reclaim second place. I thought Tortelli had the pass. He's got so a great, Tortelli. Yeah, he's got a good <laughs> chance right here if he can square it. Uh, it's just too much power. A little bit of slip on the backside by Tortelli. Oh, Tortelli goes down! Tortelli clipped the back of Henry's bike. And it doesn't look like he's going to get back into the race quickly. That AMA official seems to think he broke his wrist the way he was signaling those other fellows there. I, no, I just feel for Tortelli right here. It is very apparent, though, that he is in a lot of discomfort as we check out Greg Albertine in a battle with Mike LaRocco. Albertine, I'm sure, does not know what has happened. As they put the ice on Tortelli's left wrist. So much time can be made up and lost in one lap. Alby with the uh, sweep and the victory at Mount Morris. Been very consistent, been on the podium the last three times. And here goes Albertine. Don't look back, the sign says. A lot of it has to do with the confidence, knowing the tracks, and uh, also the added pressure he puts on himself. Might have been a little bit of a help to have Sebastian Tortelli just cruise on over here and win the opening round. Just to, just to maybe put a little bit of extra pressure on him, saying, oh, it's not that tough to come over here and just win in your first try. What's been your problem? Albertine did go into the season uninjured from Supercross for the first time, and he did proclaim, I'm going to win it this year. Back at Unadilla, Greg Albertine. Winning moto number two with LaRocco in second. Robbie Raynard a very fine run in third. And Kevin Windham putting him in good position on the podium. Hello once again, everyone. Art Ekman along with David Bailey and Davey Combs from Kenworthy Motocross Park in Troy, Ohio. It's AMA Motocross for round number eight. So we're getting set as the 32nd card is upright. When that goes sideways, the gate will drop from five to 10 seconds. We're set to go from Troy, Ohio. Moto number one of the 250s is underway. Ah, oh, the four stroke of Doug Henry in good position here. Henry to the inside. He'll be credited with the whole shot. Lusk, Ward, Button, Albertine, Wyndham all in good position. There's Koiketa, number 30, and he goes down right in front of somebody. But it's Lusk on the tail of Doug Henry out in front. It's been a back and forth battle for that position. And they haven't lost much ground to Doug Henry, who's in the lead. It's staying tight. These guys are fighting. Usually when you start getting in a battle with each other, you might let the guy in front of you start to pull away a little bit. But they have stayed close. And look at Kevin. He's right there. Kevin went to number 14 trying to get into the act. Looks like he cased it pretty hard. That can hurt the wrist. And Ward, better timing through that section. Gets around Lust. Doug Henry, though, keeping his pace just in front of Larry Ward, number seven. Lusk number four, and oh, and Lusk goes down. There's Albertine, number eight, going through the picture. Ezra Lusk getting right back on the bike, not hurt. He'll rejoin the action about seventh place in front of John Dowd, number six. Kevin Windham has joined this battle, and Larry Ward slips out of his line, tries to get creative, finding a way around Doug. He's going to leave some room for Kevin. And it just, just gives more time for Greg Albertine to catch up to the three of them. Right, Windham, happy. all of a sudden, look out from behind. Kevin Windham slickly moves into second. He is going to be able to, he's got the speed to catch the leaders. If you're Larry Ward, do you let him by? Well, I don't look like he did. Right, Actually, I think Larry Ward was trying to go for the inside. Doug Henry took the whole shot, has held the lead ever since. 
but Kevin Windham, number 14, and Greg Albertine, number 8, are now starting to apply terrific pressure. Look Kevin. at Albertine. Albertine to the inside on Windham. Oh, great move. Now Windham comes back. Back and forth we go for second place. As soon as you go in and bump somebody, you're like, oh, no, I got it coming. Hey, there's Doug making a little mistake. Came up short there. Could be just a little bit of a sign of the pressure. Oh, Windham starts rubbing plastic with Henry. He missed a gear so bad. Yeah, that set that up. He missed a gear coming out of the corner. Just messed his concentration all up. And there went Albie. Greg Albertine taking over second place. Rocco can see the leader. I mean, it, it's right there. He's made up so much time. He's got the pace and the toughness and the aggressiveness to pass all the way up to the lead. LaRocco to the inside. So Wyndham now has lost two positions. This being, of course, the first moto win of the year if he can hold on. And Albie is right there. Just those three more points he could get if he could just make this pass. The checkers are waiting for Doug Henry, so popular here at the Troy, Ohio track. They're waving, and speaking of waving, the wife Stacy just a little bit happy. Doug Henry wins moto number one here at Troy, Ohio. Who will take the overall in the 250s? Will it be Doug Henry once again? Let's check out the whole shot. As our second moto is underway, Henry got the inside charge, but Wyndham and Lusk come out with the uh, China like a rose. Number four, Lusk in the lead. Jimmy Button, number 10. Number 14 is Wyndham, and Doug Henry is right there at four. Well, he doesn't get the start. He's still right there in contention. Larry Ward up there again. Another opportunity. The challenge from Albertine comes early for Henry. On the inside, number eight, Team Suzuki's Greg Albertine makes the pass on Doug Henry. Lusk trying to pull a little bit of lead now. That's why I saw Doug Henry warming up so much between the red. It's not a problem warming up out here today. What he's trying to do is get himself psyched up and ready to perform at this pace. Here comes Albertine at Jimmy Button looking to his right, and then he made the pass. Back to the action, Doug Henry, number one. Still in good position to take the overall. Look at Kevin Windham jumping into the picture on Jimmy Button, and he makes the pass on that very short right-hander. Doug just staying glued to Albertine right now. Albie had to go wide there. Oh, Henry cuts to the inside. What a nice move on the jump. But there Henry went into the wood area into the corner in second and came out in first place. A very smooth pass by Doug Henry, and he's got a chance now for the fifth sweep of the year. Here's Albertine also getting by Lusk. Boy, this has been a, a great day for Albertine if he can hold off Lusk. Here comes Ezra Lusk on the inside. Bar to bar through that bumpy section, and Ezra Lusk makes the pass, pushing Albertine back to third. Here's the checkered flag for Doug Henry, the fifth rider this year to sweep an event. Hello everybody, Art Ekman, David Bailey, and Davey Coombs from a very beautiful Washougal motocross park in Washougal, Washington. Well, it'll be interesting to see what kind of jump Jeremy McGrath will get, his reaction time after being off so long. Number 15, Jeremy McGrath right next to Mike LaRocco. And Tim Ferry, oh, -ho, he got a pretty good jump. Henry gets good traction on the outside. Henry gets the whole shot, buddy. Ezra Lusk, number four, is right there. Kevin Windham, another good start. You'd expect that out of number 14. Jeremy McGrath in sixth spot. The mechanics busy riding on their boards as the riders come out of the trees, and then they'll go down that long loop section before a chance to see the mechanics board. Windham makes a great outside move. Gosh, he's doing well. He's picking up time on Larry Ward in the battle for fourth place. In fact, McGrath cuts to the inside on number seven, and he picks off that fourth place spot. More hard luck for the rider from Bainbridge, Georgia. From the looks of his visor, 
he went down hard. That's the, one of the fastest sections on the racetrack after the big uphill. They're fourth gear through that sweeper. The battle for third. Jeremy McGrath, Jimmy Button. Button has the edge. While we were away, Wyndham has picked up, and look at that, Kevin Wyndham has taken the lead away from Doug Henry. Oh, what timing to go to a commercial break. And Doug Henry, as we mentioned prior, just coming off a sweep at Troy. They got that four stroke so dialed to get through those tight switchbacks. Henry regains the lead. One lapper in front of them. Wyndham trying to get equal to the four stroke. Can't do it. Henry makes the corner. Here comes Wyndham. The checkers are flying, and Henry wins by a half bike length. 32nd board up. Now it's down. Five to ten seconds. The gate will drop a motor number two with the 250s here at Washuga, Washington. They're off and running. McGrath gets a pretty good start. Whoa, Lusk. That's number four, Ezra Lusk. Robbie Rayner getting hung up. Spud Walters. His bike is down. Larry Ward turns the corner. He's got some distance, though, on Doug Henry this time as they come through that little whoop section. And Jimmy Button came up with an eighth place overall at Red Bud, a fifth place at Unadilla, another eighth place at Troy. Obviously getting more used to it. And look at that, Albertine. He made a little mistake right there. Art watches. He comes into the corner, stalls it. Quick reflexes, bump starts it. Kevin talked about the ruse from Henry that first moto. Now he's got two of them. We can get up there. Bar to bar, Button makes the jump pass. And he holds on to it. So Jimmy Button has passed his teammate. Here comes Ferry to the inside on Doug Henry. So not only Jimmy Button has passed Henry, but Tim Ferry has also made the move on him. And Kevin Wyndham is right behind him once again. Wyndham. He's putting the test now to Doug Henry. And a big leaping jump by Kevin Windham. Look at here. Ward is battling with Jimmy Button. Button's got the edge on the inside. He sure did. Down the whoop section. Here is the race right now. The checkers are waiting for these guys. Jimmy Button. Ward. Whoa, he almost landed on him. Ward cuts to the inside, but Jimmy Button holds on for a great, great victory. Jimmy Button indeed becomes the seventh different rider to win this season in nine races. Hello everyone, Art Ekman, David Bailey, and Davey Coombs with you from Millville, Minnesota. Round 10 at Spring Creek Motocross Park. Button, good traction on the start. Last two races, he's done well out of the gate. It's sideways, we're going any second now as we watch Jimmy Button and his get away from the gate. Almost took it too early. Albertine, a good start, he's in the clear, but it's Damon Huffman, number 31. Huffman got the whole shot. There's Tim Ferry, number 20. Kevin Windham and Greg Albertine rubbing elbows all the way down the start. They started next to each other and bumped elbows again in the first corner. Already the two four strokes have taken over the lead. Jimmy Button, number 10. Doug Henry in second place. Trying to put a rider between him and uh, Kevin Windham. Real close. Albertine has been much more aggressive on the track lately. He has really surprised me with how he's been able to work through everything. Right around the outside of Doug Henry just outbreaks him coming into that corner. Jimmy Button getting a little squirrely. Can Robbie Rayner take advantage of it? Whoa, whoa, close. Looks like he just gets off line. The back tire slides off. I can't believe he didn't let off. I would have backed out of that. He put his foot down and just moved right over to the line of Rayner going, well, okay. Well, I'm squirreling here. I'm not going to give you any room. <laughs> it worked pretty good. And Raynard probably afraid that if he goes down, I'm right on top of it. I messed up Raynard's confidence or concentration, I think. And Alvey just snuck right in there and took second. Not a bad team move either. Letting the points leader get into second to challenge the leader. Albertine to the inside. Whoa, we're going side by side. Davey. Well, Tony, you guys are still second, but there's been a change. Now you got Greg Albertine in front of you. And here's the problem. He's going after a championship. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's, to be honest with you, Davey, we haven't, there's no, uh, there hasn't been any team tactics at Roger or we've discussed or anything like that. Uh, Albie's riding really great right now. For, for Robbie to go get him, I think uh, he's going to really have to pick it up. Uh, if he does, 
No, Al Albie doesn't have nothing to lose if Robbie wins because he's so far back in points. Greg Albertine with only a couple of turns left before seeing those checkers. This will not only be another boost of confidence for Albertine, but also take a little stress out of Roger DeCoster's life as the checkers are flying. Over there to the right, number 17, Raynard put together a pretty fine first moto and said he felt like he had more strength for the second moto, felt more confident about second motos in general. See if he can pull it off here. Check out Albertine's start right next to Heath Boss. Albertine gets a decent start like he has in the last few races, but it's the two four strokes out in front, Jimmy Button and Doug Henry. Button gets the whole shot. Jimmy Button, Doug Henry, John Dowd, Tim Ferry. Look at all the Yamahas up front. There's Raynard going through the picture, there and Albertine very safely. Yeah, and Team Suzuki. Number 10, Jimmy Button in the lead. In front of the other four-stroke, Doug Henry. Get mean is the sign <laughs> for Greg Albertine. That has not been a problem in Greg's repertoire. No, he is not riding to protect anything. He's going out there. He's not riding not to lose. He's riding to win each race and treat everything with uh, the same intensity that he has all year long. Do what he's done to get him. I really like his ability to stay out of trouble early and then set himself in a good position before making an aggressive move. Oh, oh, flying through the air. Tim Ferry. That was horrendous. Our leader, Jimmy Button. Doug Henry, his teammate and Team Yamaha right behind him. And then Kevin Windham in third place. Kevin's looking good here. He's been able to keep his distance from our team. Really putting the pressure on Doug now. You can see he's able to do it in different lines, rides right around him. Well, Wyndham has taken the lead, but Albertine now is picking off the Yamahas one by one. He just got in front of Dowd, and he's got Jimmy Button in front of him. Albertine currently in third, with Raynard in fifth behind Dowd. That's why Clarocco right behind Raynard. This is where Stanton said he was going to make up time. Watch him. Right across the tops. Albie making the pass. Albertine in second place behind Wyndham is on the verge of uh, winning his second overall. In fact, he's on the verge of becoming only the second former Grand Prix motocross champion to win an AMA National 250 title. Wyndham, really an outstanding season. Acknowledges the fans here at Millville. He's only two turns away from that checkered flag. Boy, if he could have just got a couple of those motos, that really would have tightened things up. But he's got to be happy with this second one. Kevin Windham takes the checkered flag for the sixth time this year. Albertina second will win the overall. Button with a 3-3. Boy, what an afternoon he had as well. Mike Hello, everybody. Art Eckman along with David Bailey and Davey Coombs for round number 11 of the AMA Motocross Series from Broom Tioga Sports Center in Binghamton, New York. 30-second board is up. It'll go sideways. I'm going to ask you for a comment on that later. <laughs> We're set to go for our first photo of the 250 action. See who gets the edge. Number 14, Kevin Windham, just in front of Greg Alberti. But the whole shot, money, will go to Larry Ward from the outside. John Dowd, very close to Ward, has taken over first place as Ward has moved back to second. Larry Ward actually got it, but drifted wide and down. So, so much going on in the first couple laps. So much competition out there. Ward, Dowd, and look out. Doug Henry's off the track. Trying to restart the four stroke. Odd position from the beginning. He knows that. Larry Ward is going to make it as absolutely difficult as possible to get by. We'll try to help Albertine as much as he can. Ward looking back and look at the inside move by Wyndham. Albertine in third, Dowd in fourth, LaRocco in fifth now. LaRocco starting to gain some momentum on the number three factory connection Honda. You see, LaRocco is motivated to try to get up, get around Albertine and prove his own position in the points. The four stroke of Jimmy Button now taking advantage of John Dowd to the inside. Team Yamaha teammates is Larry Ward, and he points to Albertine. Go ahead, take that, that route. Yeah, he's not going to make it any tougher for Albertine. He's going to probably sit right back there. and He's trying to move up the points ladder. 
He's behind the points leader, Greg Albertine. Albertine playing it cautious, staying out of trouble. Hey, I got a points championship to win here. Go ahead, take the inside, Mike. He just stood up and let him ride right by. Look at him. Just looks over. Yep. Yeah. Go ahead. You now with a 35-point lead, you don't need to be rubbing elbows with Michael Rocco. Ferry to the inside. Rubs a little plastic with Ward. Ward looking back at him. I think Ward's just out there having fun right now. Dyson with these guys. Ferry, he looks over and knew that if he tried to go for that burn, Ward was going to park him. Yep. Tell there. Ferry finally, finally got the edge. Too much for Ward to get in there and try to hold him off. Another great crowd on hand here at Room Tioga. Look at Ferry goes right to work on Jimmy Button. Out jumps him over the plateau, has the inside line, moves up another position. Robbie Raynard and Larry Ward, teammates. He's got a pretty good idea of the starts they got. We look at the front of Raynard and just covered, pulling his uh, roll offs for better vision, and then Ward comes by all nice and clean. Morocco. Pulling away just a little bit from Albertine. Maybe it's just that part of the track, though, David. Oh, Albertine stalls it. As we check out our leader, number 14, Team Honda, Kevin Windham. It's been a perfect race for Kevin. Kevin Windham takes the checkered flag, winning the first 250 moto here in upstate New York. It's his fifth moto victory of the year. He'll now be looking for his fourth overall victory. Boy, the wind is really picking up. Look at the flags above the porch there. That wind is really going to affect these guys. The sign is sideways, and I think they're going to try to beat the rain. We're off and running the 250s. Doug Henry gets that hole shot. Good move by him. Oh, but as we're lost, David Huffman get tied up on the inside. Larry Ward, after a hole shot in the first moto, finished up with an eighth position. Doug Henry slipping and sliding on that off camber right there. And here comes Ward to the outside. Look out, Kevin Windham almost got picked off. That was weird. Kevin's hand came off the handlebar. And you see him right there, he had to bend that hand guard back up. He already almost took the other one off in the first corner. That's, a, I've never seen anything quite like that. His hand completely came off the bar in the ruts. Look at Kevin. Oh, great inside move. He didn't quite make the pass on Ward, but he lets him know he's there. And cutting to the inside, looks back and makes the pass into second place. Up the hill we go. Windham on the throttle, cuts to the inside. Henry veers away, and we've got a new leader now. That was smooth. Comes wide around the corner, that's Henry. Oh, I'm glad about that cameraman. Mike LaRocco, after a second in the first moto, which was his best finish since his win at Unadilla, is really coming through the pack. Right in front of Larry Ward there. Good battle. Look there. Greg Albertine is behind his teammate Larry Ward. Albertine, number eight, cuts to the inside. He's on the move. Very aggressive. Didn't even really look like that time Ward made it easy for him. He just, just jammed down to the inside before Ward had an opportunity to give him room. And look at that, cutting to the inside of Loraco. Greg Albertine moving into fourth. He doesn't want to lose too many points to win them. And Loraco gets him right back. Albertine stays, looks like he stayed a little bit lower. Albert, LaRocco cuts in front of him. These guys are fearless flying down this hill. LaRocco to the inside, tries to cut in, loses control. He rubbed Albertine, but it looked like he just lost control and had to uh, save himself. Here's another look at Henry. He's the only guy out there right now jumping that downhill double, saving a little bit of time. And Al Albie, I don't know how he stayed up. Does this surprise you, David? A little bit. Rainer to the inside. Oh, Roger DeCoster's heart's got to be pumping out of his chest right about now. Tony Berluti is trying to give a pit board slow for Albie, it says. So he's trying to give him orders. And the two four strokes still going at it. Jimmy Button with a chance at that podium. That's because Jimmy Button, you see him right there, has really picked up the pace. They know Button has what it takes to make a pass. This is really tightened up. Button in second, Henry in third goes down. You mentioned about the slickness of this track in certain areas. Well, Doug found out. That's one of the slickest corners on the track, besides that other one I kept talking about. 
the checkers, and Kevin Windham has done it. He's got the sweep, and he did all he could do to pick up on the points leader, Greg Albertine. Button in second, Rainer in third, Henry in fourth, and Greg Albertine in fifth loses four points to Kevin Windham. Hello, everyone. Art Eckman, David Bailey, and Davey Coombs from Delmont, Pennsylvania, Steel City Raceway for the final round of the AMA motocross season. Well, the rain's starting to fall here right before the start of the first 250 moto at Steel City, the last national year. Behind me, Greg Albertine awaits his date with destiny. Guys, he's about four years behind schedule, but he's on track, 21 points away from his first AMA national championship. You know he's got a lot of pressure, but hey, you don't win three world championships being nervous. The board going sideways now, so that gate will drop at any moment. Let's check out Albertine on the left, Wyndham right next to him, little elbow in there on the inside. A good position as John Dowd gets the uh, credit for the hole shot, number six. Dowdy out in front. Larry Ward moves into second place. Dowdy not uh, preferring to push Ward off the track. He could have very easily there. And Larry Ward moves into the lead. That was beautiful. You usually see all the passes through that corner being made on the inside. Ward just laid it over, used the outside bank, doubled through there, and picked up the lead. That's got to feel good right now. Anytime you can lead the first lap of a national, the crowd's going wild. You get to pull a tear off, have clear vision. You're the guy in control. Track conditions are great. It's getting overcast. The wind picking up a bit. And Greg Albertine, he wants to stay ahead of Wyndham. The battle for third is on. Caton slips back as Albertine slips through. Kevin Windham saying, get by this guy. Why did Caton have to pick this moto to ride with so well? I think that's <laughs> probably going through Kevin's head. Caton looks to the side. Kevin Windham has the opportunity right now and makes the pass. Albertine hounding John Dowd. He's approaching this final round with that same sense of confidence and positiveness that he did at the beginning of the year when he said, hey, I'm going to win this thing this year. Albertine. Bar to bar with John Dowd coming down the hill. Who breaks last? Albertine takes the corner. He has six moto wins, and right now he's working hard to move into third place. Plus, with all kinds of bad luck and problems here in the late going of the season, and Doug Henry goes down. What a break for Ezra this time. He just slipped out. Another one of those berms I talked about. You just have to find exactly the right line. Here's our leader. And Albertine in second place. Larry Ward and Greg Albertine. And you suppose Larry Ward will be appreciative of the fact that Team Suzuki gave him a second chance at a factory ride, which is very unusual. I think we're about to find out. <laughs> I think I know where you're going with that. Yeah. Yeah, we, I'm sure he is. And he understands what's going on right now. He's had as much as the uh, eight second lead. He looks back at Albertine as if to say, take it over, partner. Well, that's smart because the five points that Albie needed over Wyndham, Ward just gave him. This is the seventh straight year that Delmont has been the last race of the season, but it's the first time in at least three years that the title has been decided here. If that is indeed is the case, let's go down to uh, Davy Combs. Hi, Roger, about three laps away. How do you feel? Feel pretty good, as good as good as you can feel in this situation. You know, it's it, it's you know it's a motorsport, so you never know until it's finished. But um, things could not look better now. Did you have words with Robbie Raynard and Larry Ward before the motor? To just think about Greg when he was out there. Yeah, I asked him, you know, not not to be in the way, and uh, you know, I don't I don't expect anybody to to ride dirty, and uh, that's both from outside and from the other side. And uh, up to now, things are going good, so I hope. It, it's not a seven minutes like this. It's a tough time to have to interview Roger DeCaster, David. <laughs> no, he doesn't want to take his eyes off anything. And yeah. He's got things coming in his headset as well, but he's been in this position before. And, uh, you know, he's still get nervous no matter what. I mean, it's always nerve-wracking when his title on the line. And right now you got a, a big pat on the back for Roger DeCaster for turning this program around and getting more support for next year and year ensuing years from the factory in Japan. The checkers for Alby, Ward's holding off Wyndham, barely.
you're the man. Well, right now, Greg Albertine's the man, I think, as he has taken this first moto and the championship of the 250s in AMA National Action. Ward in second, Wyndham in third. Let's go down to Davey. Well, Greg, finally it's happened. Before I even ask you any questions, I want to give the microphone to the AMA's Duke Finch. Yeah, Greg, hard fought, well deserved. Took you a little long and you planned on, but on behalf of the AMA, congratulations. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right, Greg, let me ask you a question. Did you know that the moto would turn out that way? Did you have any idea that Larry Ward would get out there and help you? You needed a win, but you needed Wyndham to get third, and it happened. Well, Larry's been the best teammate I could really ask for. You know, every every time I've needed a push, and uh, he's helped me out, and, uh, you know, I really got to give him all the thanks. But uh, first and foremost, I got to give Jesus Christ all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise, you know, and uh, thank you for this, Lord. All of the Suzuki brass are here. Your old mechanic, Ian's here. Your new wife, Amy. This has to be a great feeling. It's an awesome feeling, you know, I've waited so long for this and uh, just all, to all the fans who have stuck by me, you know, through the hard times and uh, when they didn't think I was going to do it, they still supported me and, and I really appreciate that. Congratulations, Sam. The pressures of high expectations mixed with frustrating failures over several years now lifted. As we go back down to Davey and man of the hour now is Larry Ward. Well, Larry, beside us, Greg Albertine's getting all the accolades of a national champion. I got to say, it looked to me like you took one for the team. Ah, well, you know, I was having fun out there. Uh, I don't know why everything was clicking so good for me out there. First motos, I've been struggling, but I got a decent start, and I was, I was felt like I was riding a comfortable pace and falling away. I felt really good, but uh, you know, there's always second moto, and that was a lot of fun. And Greg and Roger, the whole team has been so good to me the last two years. Um, you know, it, it, it's no big deal. <laughs> Final moto of the 1999 season. They start jumping the gate. Looks like malfunction. That was Robbie Rayner getting off last as he got caught in the gate. Somebody down on the first turn. We'll have to check it out. That's Larry Ward. Look who's in second place behind Tim Ferry. Greg Albertine. Doug Henry in third. He's been such a, an important part of Supercross and motocross in his career, Doug Henry. Gosh, he's got to be the sentimental favorite right now. He is. I'm sure they'd like to see any of these guys go out and close the day. Tim Ferry, for one, the privateer, to get a moto victory. See Albertine close out the season in championship fashion. The year I won the 250 National Championship, I only won two races. Two or three, I don't even remember. But it wasn't very many, I can tell you that. But I was very consistent. Well, as we mentioned earlier, John michelle Bale won the title in 91 in the 250s without a victory. John Michelle Bale was just amazing to come over here and win every championship, the 250, the 500, the Supercross, all in the same year, and then just said, all right, I'm going to go road racing. And that's just amazing, the talent that guy had. What I hear, he still goes pretty fast. Side by side with Ferry. Ferry the inside, and here goes Albertine cutting to the inside. That's a, that move surprised me at that point, but now Albertine takes the lead. One of the first nationals I rode was 1981, and I was lined up right in between Ken Howerton and Bob Hanna at Mount Morris. Talk about Ger I didn't mean to be lined up there. It was all that was left. And those guys just hated each other. It looks like Kevin's going to just bump him back one spot and get up there and deal with Albertine on his own. Catch it. Kevin Wyndham a great deal of pride. And here's Greg Albertine. Oh, he's got to be feeling great inside. This, there's going to be a big party tonight. He's got the title, probably the overall, the final round, a couple of moto wins, just to put an exclamation point on everything. He's been confident the whole time. I, I wasn't absolutely sure looking at the talent lined up for this 250 class this year, but he has proved it. I think Kevin has really realized more so in this series than ever before that every point counts and that you can't give up no matter how bad it seems. That first race could have been a, a whole different story if he had stayed out there and just tried to salvage something. You never know. I, I look back to McGrath doing that same thing in Washugo a few years ago. Greg Albertine comes across the finish line with the checkers fly. Here's Doug Henry. What an emotional moment. This has got to be for the Henry family. 
So many friends and family drove to Delmont to see this last race. I'm glad I got to be around to see Doug's career. I watched the whole thing, and in some ways, he's going to be glad to not have to come back to all this, but he will miss it.